and most common problem. Why does your stretch fabric start to roll? Here's some stretch fabric and I've cut the pattern out of this and you can see here this edge is rolling. So this is where um, the fabric has been cut and it rolls in towards the fabric. What's happened is when this fabric was supplied to me, it came rolled like this on the edge. And what it is, is when you pull on your fabric either way, like that, you sort of get more rolls like that. So when you cut your pattern out, and I can show you here, when you cut your pattern out, what you'll get is a nice flat finish. But then when you stretch the fabric, like this, you'll find it starts to roll inwards like that. So when you want to sew, so when you cut your stretch fabric, there are important things to remember. Waft your fabric, sounds a bit daft, waft your fabric and lay it flat on the table. Don't try and cut your pattern while it's laying on top of other things and make sure you use a good sharp pair of scissors so that you get a nice cut. I like these scissors because they lay straight on the table like that and I can just follow the pattern round very, very easily. So that's really important. The next thing you want to do when you cut your pattern out, cut it out so it's right sides together so it's ready to sew. So you don't have to mess about with pulling pins out and trying to piece the pattern together, especially if you've accidentally rolled it. Let me show you on this one. If I pull that, what happens is I've made that roll. Okay, so now I've made that fabric roll, how do I unroll it ready to sew? Okay, so we're back at the ironing board now. And what we can do is grab those pieces that have curled up. And what we can do is just take the pin out for a moment. There. And we need to lay that fabric back ever so carefully so that it's nice and flat. Okay, that might hold. If it doesn't hold, what you need to do is just hold on to it. With your, with your other hand and it's full steam ahead press that down and then grab a clapper a clapper is a very useful tool underrated underused and what happens is when i release that i'm back to i can shake that about and i'm back to a nice flat fabric there we go and then we just place the pins back so it's ready to sew. Let me show you with this one what happens if I don't use the clapper. And it curls back up so you need a clapper really to help you you can leave it a bit longer can you see how it curls back up so grab a clapper all this clapper is is a piece of wood that i've cut and i've rounded and smoothed it out with some sanding paper my next tip for making sure you sew a beautiful finish on your product. So I've got two stretch fabrics there. You want to be using a jersey needle. Sometimes jersey needles are known as ballpoint needles and you can see that on this packet. You don't want to be using the stretch needle. Stretch needle is for things like scuba, spandex, lycra, that kind of stuff that you use on swimming costumes and on dancewear. What you want to be using is the ballpoint needle, also known as the jersey needle. And that allows the needles to pierce between the fibres rather than through them. When you get to a stretch fabric, a stretch fabric has usually a four-way stretch. 
so you have a more tighter weave so you need something a little bit more pointy a pointy needle going through wool and cotton knits will probably damage your seams you won't be able to tell straight away if you use the wrong needle but after a few washes you'll start to see that the seams are laddering so just make sure you get the right needles for your project your machine will probably offer the option of using a stretch stitch and the stretch stitch looks like this what that allows is for your fabric to be sewn looking like a normal stitch but it then stretches and the seams don't pop you can use something like a straight stitch which is a triple stitch or sometimes we have the lightning bolt stitch if you don't have either then just use a regular zigzag just like I have here. So now I've changed the needle on the machine and I've got some good quality thread because that's very important too. I need to make sure I've got the correct setting on my machine for a stretch stitch. So we need either the blue or the red straight stretch stitch or we need to use a zigzag. On this machine you don't have a lightning bolt stretch stitch and that's fine. So Let's go for this triple stitch and we're going to use either S1 or S2. The width doesn't matter of our stitch, but we will centre it. If you don't have a walking foot for this project, just use your regular foot. But a walking foot comes in really handy when you've got thick layers or stretch fabric. We're going to do it with that. When you're sewing stretch fabric, don't start right at the end. Start a little bit further in, about there, and then work your way back and then work forward. And you'll find you're less likely to get your fabric trapped inside the machine. Sure you get the hook right to the top when you release the fabric so that you don't pull on your stitches when you release this from the machine and just make sure this works and the stitches don't pop if you have a magnetic seam guide use that to help you to get you to go around curves so now that's stitch i'm just going to trim around the edge so that I have a less seam allowance and the triple stitch, which is a stretch stitch, will hold the fabric quite strongly. You don't need to lock stitches on. Okay, straight. so we're going to attach the band to the hat fold the band up in half, just open the seam up and just 
pin them together there like that make sure it's nice and flat so there's no bulk there i'm just going to place a pin in that just to hold it in place gets trapped on the arm. There you go. Let's trim like we did before.